specifically, let's go into pricing and discount management as an example here. And we can see we have active discounts that's actually on the front screen or on the actual dashboard workspace. What we can do is we can actually go through right click, for example, on one of the tiles, go to personalize this, and we have a couple of different actions and options to be able to go through and do this personalization. We could change the description if we wanted to of the workspace. We could hide it. We could skip it in the tab sequence. And then lastly, we could actually go ahead and pin this to a dashboard. And when we click on the actual pin to dashboard as part of that process, and then go back into our actual dashboard, you're going to see now that we actually have that information that we now have that particular pin exposed where we can access then those pending discounts. So this allows for you instead of having to click into the workspace to take those exceptions such as in distributed order, order management here, I have an exceptions area even, to be able to then click into that to get to that information. So if I wanted to add a new user for example and I'm in system administration, I can click on my users and then I can access that and then create a new user if I knew to as part of that process. So just know that there's some personalization aspect that you have to help reduce the number of clicks to go into workspaces to be able to access that information. There's even more powerful capabilities in terms of personalization as well that I want to highlight. An example of that is if I click on my personalized tile page container and then I click on personalize this form as another option here, you can see that I have a bunch of different options where I can hide different values, that I can add fields, that I can move things around or skip tab sequences basically in mass here. And what I wanted to highlight, for example, here, you see a bunch of workspaces that are on the screen, which is great, but if I click on the hide action here as part of the personalization perspective, you can see that I have a ton of different workspaces that are actually hidden but come out of the box as part of the actual product offering. So if you're doing customer invoicing and customer payments, generally you would have those exposed. So you can actually go through and then personalize this by very easily just clicking on it to be able to then have that experience. You can go through and lock it, so therefore there's no changes that can be made then to the screen. And what you can also do is you can actually go through and import and export the changes that you make, so that way other users can also have those personalizations. So it allows for you to really create an environment that's more focused than on your user roles, as opposed to actually going through and making the change on each individual user and then having to manually replicate that to other users. That personalization perspective as well, though, just doesn't stop there. If we go, for example, into our all customers here that I clicked on, on our sales order processing and inquiry workspace, what we should see is a list that comes up that allows for us then to go through and then make changes to that particular list then to reflect those values. And so as we wait for this to really load up as part of our first load here, what we're going to see then is the screen that's called a list-based page that exists within Dynamics 365 that allows for us then to go through and then make different types of personalizations to it as well. So as you would expect inside of a modern system, uh, especially from Microsoft as well, obviously we have our ribbon bar. So our ribbon bar groups the information so that, for example, if I'm looking at sell within a customer, these are probably going to be prices or quotations or trade agreements that we have that are related to the customer because they're part of the sell type group. If we look at invoice, well, we should start seeing different journals or free text invoices that we could generate off of these particular customers. The information is logically grouped. And as you can see, what you can also do is you can collapse that particular ribbon bar so that you have more screen real estate. All the lists inside of Dynamics 365 are very consistent. The customer list that we're looking at now, if we close that out and then click on the customers just to show it again as part of it, we can see then that this is the customer list. And then if we go to all vendors, for example, that we were looking at before, so if I go ahead and then select any of that all vendors capability or even type it in to look for that information, what we're going to see then is those vendors as well and it's going to be in a list format as well. So remember, anytime that we're accessing our system and looking at the data, we start with all vendors and then we go into a card-based form as part of that. And these can also be personalized. So what I can do here is I can actually go through and hide the column. I can choose to add additional columns if I want to as well. I can go through and then personalize this form as well. So if I write I click and I say I personalize this grid and let's say I want to personalize this form I could add fields then into this particular area and what you're going to see on the far right here will be a field list that will come up 
that then allows me to add those fields into this particular list. I can move things around um, just like you could within the actual role tailored client. But the thing to note with this is that this is now web-based, which means that this information is then conveyed for any of your other areas that you actually go through and open up the actual application to access this information. You also have the capability of doing filters. If you remember in 2012 R3, we had a filter by grid. That same concept exists here along with multi-sort capabilities. And then filter-wise as well, if we want to look at more advanced filters inside of our environment, you can see that there's the show filters capability that's inside of here that allows us then to go through and then add multiple filters to be able to represent that information on this particular screen.